Hey everybody, <clears throat> it's Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control, and tonight we're going to talk about whatever you want to talk about. It's uh, free for all, so I'm here, I got my tea, I got my water, I'm exhausted, I've worked all week. I hope everybody's doing alright, I hope everybody's had a fairly good week. The week's almost over, Friday, tomorrow's the day. So, how's everybody been doing tonight? Let's see, what are we going to talk about tonight? So, I recently did a video. Let's get right into it. So, I usually always talk about the things that I do. So, um, first, I want to stop and mention that you need to, uh, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, let's see, let's go here. There we go. There's my Amazon page. So, if you go to my channel on YouTube, it's... Uh, youtube.com slash greenacrespc and uh, it's in the description below if you have problems remembering the the uh, title or the uh, URL but this is my page this is where I've got all my videos and everything so uh, go over and hit the subscribe button right there and like and follow it whatever hit the notification bell so you know when I'm live like tonight and uh, I also have an Amazon page which like I said all these links are below in my description this is Amazon. This has got uh, all the products that I recommend using to eliminate bugs. Um, you know, I've got, let's see, uh, ticks, bed bugs, ants, stink bugs, spiders, uh, bed bugs in New York and Canada, lice, carpenter bees, bed bird mites, springtails, cockroaches, mouse and rat, termites, and flea control. So those are all the different ones that I've got listed here uh, that I use on my channel. Like I said, all my videos, I've got, actually, I recommend if you're if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you scroll down, uh, actually, those, the uh, phone number's kind of covering it up, but if you go to this playlist, three to four uh, step pest solutions, um, you can go here, and I've got a whole playlist right here if you're interested. The very first one in the playlist is how to get rid of bed bugs, and then how to get rid of roaches, how to get rid of springtails, how to get rid of fleas. And so on and so forth. I've got 10 different videos on the list. I recommend you go hit those up, take a look at them, see how things go, if you like them or not. Uh, I think they'll help you a lot. They're usually really easy. Like this uh, bed bug one's only 11 and a half minutes. Doesn't take very long to learn how to get rid of bed bugs. Uh, I've got lots of videos on bed bugs. That's how most people know me on YouTube, is by the, uh, the help that I provide for bed bug services. But um, anyway, I also have a TikTok page. Um, and so I'm just going over these now. Most everybody who follows me on YouTube know this, these things already exist. But I'm just, you know, kind of showing these for the people who watch the VODs later. Because every live stream, I always upload and save for later so that you can watch it. If you have any questions, maybe your question was answered on the show. So uh, I've got a TikTok page. Uh, it's also at Green Acres PC, same as everything else. That's pr pretty much the URL for everything. Um I've got these little bed bug videos that I did. I'm not going to click them and play them because every time I do, the sound plays and I get demonetized because the sounds are not uh, okay on YouTube. You know, YouTube doesn't like the music. So I recommend you go and check them out. Some of these videos I never put on uh, YouTube for that reason because YouTube doesn't like this, the music I pick to play on the videos. It's considered copyright strike. And I want to make sure people can see my videos. And anytime I get a copyright strike, uh, people won't see my videos. So um, you can go to TikTok and see those. I don't have a whole lot of followers. I only have like 76. I haven't been on here for a very long time. But I've got quite a few. You scroll down. Some funny ones. This is, this is just a funny one here. It's not really anything about bugs. But then I've got some bed bug videos. How to see them on pillows. Like this, this one here is a pillowcase. How to tell if you've got bed bugs on your pillow. Uh, how to tell where to look for them on your uh, actual seams of the mattress. See there? They're right there in the seams where to look and find them. So, you know, different things like that. Just little, you know, tidbits. I started doing that on YouTube too. So if you go over to the YouTube channel and you scroll down, you'll see these little shorts right here. Let's close that. Uh, these are just a minute long. They're actually typically like 58 seconds. Like this one's 59, 59, 59. So they're really short little snippets of uh, videos I've already done. So if you're interested in taking a look at that, like this one here, this is one of my favorite ones. My wife loves this one. 
She said because I'm cleaning her van. But anyway, see, I detail the van. I show how to get a van ready for, uh, or a vehicle. Actually, it's really a vehicle, whether it's a van or, it's my van. But uh, it's vehicle prep to how to do a uh, uh, prepare for a bed bug service. Like so, bed bugs are. For I mean, like I said, most people know me for my bed bug help. They, I, I give a lot of people help on eliminating bed bugs, and this specific video goes over how to clean an automobile. Um, because you really do need to clean your automobile before treating for bed bugs. A lot of exterminators won't even treat automobiles for bed bugs. But uh, it absolutely should be done if you have a bed bug problem because bed bugs hitchhike on your shoes, they hitchhike on your pants, on your jackets, your clothing, shirts. Um, they, in fact, I was uh, I actually went to a guy's house a few months back, and he we were set standing outside talking in his uh, talking in his uh, front lawn, and as we're talking, I'm looking at him, and I realize that. He's actually got bed bugs on his coat. He has uh, bed bug spots where they've pooped on his coat and stuff. He's got like the blood smears and everything. And if he were to get into my car, if I gave him a ride somewhere or if he drove somewhere, then he's going to take the bed bugs with him. They will get off of his clothing into his car. They will infest his car. They'll pretty much follow him wherever he goes and infest anywhere he goes. And so it's important to treat your automobile if you are treating your house for bed bugs because they will transport with you on your automobile. So that's why I did that video. I did that video to show how to uh, actually um, inspect, how to get a car ready for bed bugs. But I also have a video uh, that I'm working on how to treat a car for bed bugs. I actually already have all of these videos done, finished. I've made a course on how to get rid of bed bugs and uh, it's over here on Udemy, which that is also in the description below. This is actually the first video, the intro video to my course, where I go over um, the introduction to bed bug control. I talk, talk, basically, I talk about what the course is about. In fact, let's see. I'll let you watch it here. Hey, everybody. This is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. I've been on YouTube for over four years, at least at the time of the filming of this course. I want to thank you for purchasing this course and more than likely you have followed me from YouTube because you've seen my videos on how to eliminate bed bugs and you're wondering if there's any additional information on how to stop these horrible pests from sucking your blood and so hopefully this course will help you. I'm sure it will. I've helped hundreds of people worldwide eliminate their bed bugs with great success. So in this course, you will learn how to prepare the area for bed bug treatment. You will learn how to treat these prepared areas for bed bugs. You will learn how to treat beds, sofas, recliners, and even automobiles for bed bugs. Bed bugs hide in just about anywhere people are. So by watching this course, course and performing the actions in this course, I am absolutely positive that you will be able to eliminate your bed bug problem. Thank you again for purchasing and remember, always wear the proper protective equipment. Always follow your labels and you too can be a professional bed bug killer like me. Now, that's more of a serious video more serious than what we're doing here but you could tell i'm not that serious because i'm wearing a pink flamingo t-shirt so <laughs> but that's the intro video i made and i don't know how well that transferred to you guys if you could hear that very well i actually have free videos over there that you can go and view part of the course if it's something that you think that you might want to look into if it's uh your first time purchasing a course through this system i think it's only like 12 dollars and so uh, you could get the whole course. That's like 40, 50 minutes worth. Um, actually, it says it's the introductions, two minutes. And so the, all of the prep and instruction treatment is 35 minutes long. And it's got a, uh, a test at the end to make sure that you actually understand. It's, it's basically a course, like a, like a college course on how to get rid of bed bugs. But it's not one of these, you know, um, I, I, 
I explained that you really do need to read your labels. I do have a couple of links, like if you go through and look at these different videos, um, I've got links on them that will that basically link back to like how to mix pesticide. I don't waste a whole lot of time uh, delving into how to properly mix chemicals or anything like that. It's really just a how-to guide on how to get into there, how to get in there and get rid of the bed bug problem that you've been suffering with. I, I figure most people know how to read their labels. Most people understand that you know it, it, they're pretty plain and simple. It's crossfire is what I go over with all my videos on here. Uh, I delve I, I delve into using crossfire, how to use it, how to use it properly, where to treat, how to treat your beds, how to treat your you know everything. This has actually been online for about a month now, and I uh, I haven't even been mentioning it in my live streams because. It's something I figured if you wanted to follow the links in the description below, they're there. They've always been there. And uh, you could go and check it out if it's something that's interests you and, and you want to. But like I said, everything that's on here, uh, you could pretty much get on my YouTube channel too, uh, bits and pieces of it. The only thing that I've got on here that I, I don't think I have on YouTube yet is uh, the ability to clean the car. Not necessarily clean the car, but how to clean out a car of bed bugs, where to treat, and how to get rid of uh, bed bugs in an automobile. I think that's the only video on here that I have that I didn't uh, that I didn't actually have on my YouTube channel yet. But I will eventually, as soon as I get everything loaded up, I'll have it. But it takes a lot of time to process this. This is something that I worked on for about, let me see, this is April. I finished it in March, and I was working on it for about three months. So it took a lot to make this. I had to set up the rooms. I had to, it's all demonstration only. The, the place that I'm in, I didn't actually uh, treat for bed bugs, but I show the places where you need to treat for bed bugs and a couple of things I did do, uh, like baseboards and stuff like that. I showed exactly how to treat these areas and I put it up on, like I said, this website here. But um, most everything I've got on my YouTube channel and you can find things there as well for free. Like I said, I'm, I'm all about, you know, giving people free information, but that's just a little course that you could go to. And it's got tests and stuff on there just to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. I sell generators to companies that manufacture industrial heaters to kill bed bugs for hotels. Their success rate is 90 plus percent. What are your thoughts since no chemicals are used? Uh, well, the, when I use Crossfire, I always get rid of bed bugs. Um, I don't use heat. I don't believe in heat. I think heat is a, um, I think heat is a overpriced, um, uh, overused, and uh, improper way to get rid of bugs. I think it's crazy insane to think that you can bake your house like an oven just to kill bugs. That to me is just really uh, alien idea it's really weird it's um it's something that the industry has really glommed on to and i don't think it's an adequate way to get rid of bed bugs the problem is is that if you turn the heater off the bed bugs are um there's no residual there to kill anything in the wall i go over this in several of my videos um where in fact the very first video on this channel is why bed bugs uh, aren't killed by heat treatments. Why heat treatments don't actually work to get rid of bed bugs. Um, now, the reason that bed bug heat treatments don't work is a lot of older homes have a lot of drafty areas, have a lot of places it's very hard to get the heat up to 130 plus degrees, um, and they the bed bugs retreat into the cracks and crevices around plaster moldings and they get into the wall and they're in the insulation and insulation is designed with the RF factor to keep the heat in or keep the heat out. And if the bed bugs are in the wall inside your, uh, inside your insulation, they will not be killed by a heat treatment. No matter how hard you try, you will not get rid of them unless you burn the house down to the ground. You're not going to get rid of your bed bugs. Um, and I'll pose this to you. You are a tenant. You are moving into a brand new apartment. You go into the apartment. It's vacuumed. It's clean. The walls have been freshly painted. There are no signs of any bed bugs anywhere in the apartment. Now, this is something that happens all the time. 
You go into your apartment, you move your belongings in, you put in your bed, you put in your chairs, your tables, your, your dining room set, whatever, move everything in, you start sleeping over, and within the first 24 to 48 hours, you start getting bug bites, and you realize that the apartment is actually infested with bed bugs. Now, when you went in, the apartment was clean. There were no visible signs of bed bugs anywhere. You couldn't find a bed bug anywhere. There were no bed bugs to your knowledge, in the apartment. Where were the bed bugs? Were they, there, were no fur, there was no furniture. There's no beds. There's no sofa. There's no furniture in the apartment for the bed bugs to live in. So where were the bed bugs? The bed bugs were in the wall void. Bed bugs go in a lot of the same places that cockroaches go. They go into the walls. They actually retreat in past uh, baseboards, crown molding, light sockets, uh, wall sockets, um, light switches, curtain rod holes, and they retreat into the walls. These are places bed bugs do live. It's in the wall, in the insulation. If you go in and use a heat treatment, you will not get rid of your bed bugs. It's not possible. Now, you say that these people who use these generators that you produce, uh, that they have a 90% success rate with bed bugs. I think they're lying. I don't believe them. I don't think it's true. I've been behind too many failed heat treatments to believe that. Uh, the world is full of liars. In fact, I might even be lying to you now. How do you know I'm not telling you the truth? Um, the fact is, is that the, the heat treatment is just not that successful. Now, if your customer never calls you back, say you have somebody come out, do a heat treatment on your house. It's expensive. You pay $3,500 to get rid of bed bugs. They don't get rid of your bed bugs. The last thing you're going to do is call them back when they're going to charge you again to come back out. Um, a lot of these, that's what happens with a lot of these companies. They have mile-long lists of things you have to do, you have to perform. If you do not do these things, then they will say, well, it's your fault. That's the reason why you still have bed bugs. It's not our fault. We did it right. It's your fault. And so they blame it on the customer, and they don't come out, and they don't take care of the customer, they don't take care of the problem, because they really shouldn't have sold them a heat treatment in the first place. They should have done a chemical residual. That's what they should have done. That's the most effective way to get rid of bed bugs. It's been the most effective way to get rid of bed bugs for 22 years. It's what I've always done, and I've always gotten rid of bed bugs. You know, I've got a much higher success rate than 90% at getting rid of bed bugs. In fact, I help people on YouTube who have no experience getting rid of bed bugs, who do not have 22 years of experience, may have only had bed bugs for a few weeks, if not a few months, and they're able to get rid of bed bugs on their own. So it's not this thing that you need to go and generate electricity or propane or these crazy astronomical price devices to get rid of bed bugs. You just don't need to do it. If a layman who is not an exterminator can go out and get rid of bed bugs on their own by using Crossfire and following my directions, you don't need to hire a heat treatment. You don't really need to hire me. You don't need to hire pest control at all. You can get rid of bed bugs on your own. Um, Andre says, hey, Jason, how long do you believe bed bugs can remain dormant or until death? Uh, the longest that they've recorded bed bugs to be able to live is 18 months without a blood meal. So a year and a half. Uh, now, that's not the norm, but that is how long they've been able to find that bed bugs could live is up to 18 months without a blood meal. Now, most places you go and you search online is anywhere from six to eight months. Um so it's just a, basically a fraction of that. But I have actually had bed bugs um, in a couple of customers of mine who have had vacant homes that have been vacant for at least a year and a half. And when the tenants move in, the uh, bed bugs come out and start biting them. So these houses were actually empty. Um, and as soon as somebody moved in, the bed bugs started biting the person. Now, whether or not the bed bugs were feeding on mice or bats or you know other animals in the house is unknown. But I know that they weren't feeding on people because no one was living in the house. So that's what I've experienced. But yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly against heat treatments. I, um, I've been behind too many people, uh, too many failed heat treatments. I've had to uh, clean up other exterminator, exterminator messes, and I just don't feel like it's adequate that's a, to answer your question. see here.
<sighs> I can't remember what I was talking about before I was talking about. I, I did talk about my, my course. Now, this is the course I was talking about. These are This is like step-by-step step how to get rid of bed bugs. The very first one is a living room inspection, how to inspect a living room, uh, living room treatment, how to treat the living room, a uh, bed bug inspection, bed bu uh, bedroom, I'm sorry, bedroom inspection, uh, bedroom treatment. Uh, let me show you. I don't know why I'm doing that and not showing it to you. Um, and then you've got six was miscellaneous areas to treat inside, baseboards, windows, doors, crown molding, those different places uh, is step six. And then I've got step seven is vehicle prep. Step, step eight is vehicle treatment. And then I've got a, a practice test at the bottom. So that's, that's all it is. It's pretty easy. And uh, like I said, if you've never used this, the reason I went with this specific company to host my course is because they offer these deals. So if you go to, let's see, let's just go to their website. See, you can get it for $12. And that's what they do for people who have just started like doing these courses that they want to learn how to do something, you can get a course for 12 bucks. And that's what mine is going for right now. If you've never actually done a course on Udemy's website, because they're not the most popular website out there. But if you go to their website, like I said, the link's in the description. In fact, I could just post it here. Um, let me just copy and paste it in chat. If I could figure out how to use my computer. Um, that's the actual course that I've got and you can go and check it out and see what you think. But um I think it's I think it's very valuable information. But it's kinda you know, one of the problems with YouTube is and this is why I mean this is something that I just have to deal with. It's not really anything you can do about it. But if you go to the playlist on YouTube, I've got one um like so here's a bed bug. This is bed bug crash course for DIY pest control. Now you can click that and that's actually got an entire playlist from how to identify bed bugs. Uh, you can't see bed bugs, a myth, you know, showing you what bed bugs look like. I've got why heat treatments don't work on bed bugs. The top three ways uh, pest control pros eliminate bed bugs. So I've got that as number three. And so the problem with YouTube is by the time you actually get to the videos that start helping you, like all the way down here to number 10, the most extensive bed bug treatment on YouTube, you've gone through about an hour's worth of information here that you really, you know, the problem is is that you need this information, but this, uh, the way the course is set up, it's only 35 minutes for everything. So you get everything in 35 minutes. I've kind of compiled it all down and smooshed it in so you can actually get what you need quick and easy. Any opinion on the chemical apprehend? I like apprehend. I've never used it myself um, the problem with Apprehend is it is a, uh, a mold spore. And the problem with mold spore is the mold spore, people are having allergic reactions to it. And so I'm leery about trying it. Now, if for some reason Crossfire stops working, then by all means, I would absolutely probably buy Apprehend and move to it. Um, but it's not so, the reason I don't talk about it on my channel is because you cannot purchase apprehend. At least you couldn't. You used to be able to. Let me see. A p r e h n d apprehend. Oh, that's a Yelp review. I don't want to hear that. Apprehend pesticide. Let's see. So the, the way that I understood it was that you could only buy it from them. Um, so you have to have an account. Order now. So if you click order now, all right, log in here. You have to log in. Um, you have to contact one of our authorized distribution channels. So you've got BWI, Forsaw, Oldham, PCS Target. So I could get it because that's who supplies to me. These people won't supply to you unless you have a license. So like Target, I buy a lot of my products through Target and they are, it's not Target like, you know, the dog with the red spot on their eye, but it's Target uh, specialty products. They used to be called Residex and um, I buy from them. So that's, uh, they won't sell to you unless you have a pesticide license because a lot of the products they sell are wholesale. 
So that's the problem with apprehend, and that's why I don't. Um, that's why I don't talk about it on my channel because my YouTube channel is really centered around a do-it-yourselfer. And if you have to have a license and you're you're already performing pest control, then you're not really a do-it-yourselfer. Um, that being said, I have a lot of people who contact me who are pest control technicians. I have several people. I have a couple people that live in uh, Nigeria that contact me and a few people in Canada and over, over around the world. And uh, I try to help people where I can, the best I can. I basically just it's tell them what I've done to... Uh, See you tomorrow, buddy. I heart you. That's the sign that I've turned off the games in the house. So, <laughs> sorry about that. It goes off every single time in my live stream because it always goes off at 10 o'clock. Um, but anyway, so Danielle says, do you have any advice for people who frequent thrift shops? Don't frequent thrift shops, okay? If you're going to buy something from a thrift store, don't. Because thrift stores are a good way to infest your house with bugs. One of the things that comes from thrift stores are uh, is like Goodwill, Goodwill, uh, the DAV thrift shop, um, you know, Salvation Army, Army. These places are uh, notorious for cockroaches. So if you're going to buy anything from a thrift shop, things you don't want to buy are kitchen appliances. Don't buy kitchen appliances. Kitchen appliances are, um, all right, so, so let's say you have cockroaches. Let's assume you have a cockroach infestation at your house. Cockroaches typically frequent kitchens. They frequent kitchen appliances. And let's say you buy a toaster or a microwave oven or, you know, something like that from a used thrift store um, and you bring it home. Well, that used to be in someone else's apartment. They used to be in someone else's kitchen. Um, and they may have had cockroaches and the cockroaches are in those appliances. You bring them home and then you've invested your house. So I, I advise that people never, ever buy electronics, uh, no electronic device, no Xbox, no PlayStation, no computer, um, rent by the week stores are also really bad for this. Like, you know, rent a center type places, um, because they will repo. So let's say you, uh, rent to own a computer and you bring it home and you plug it up and you use it and the roaches get in your computer and you decide you're not going to pay for it anymore. So you take it back to the store or they repossess it because you stop making payments on it. Well, now they have your cockroach infested computer in their store. They put it on a discount shelf. Somebody else can go in there and buy it for a hundred bucks, bring it home and have roaches all over their house. So, and they, this happens all the time, like at stores like Aaron's and uh, rent a center. And you know, these are just name brand stores that I know exist that have these problems because they are, you know, selling furniture that's basically been in someone else's house. Is your course for commercial or... Re oh, it's for everybody. My course works for everybody. I purposely do... I try... So the way that I teach people how to get rid of bugs, you know, any bugs. And actually, this course... So the cool thing about this place... I'm going to show it off again. Let me give you some... Some I'm hit. I just hit that. Sorry about that. If I, I my hat gets in the way sometimes, but um, this course, the way this course works is as I, I can add things to it. So if you purchase this, this is my Bedbug Pro course. I can actually come in later and add things to it as I make new videos. I can add more stuff to it, and you get that too. So it's not like once you purchase it, it's not like you have to buy additions to it. You get it automatically. I can just add things to it, and you get it. So if I decide to add you know, 10, 15 minutes more worth of information, then you get that right away. Um, if you were to leave like a review or something, and you said, hey, or see, like, there's a question that answers. You can ask questions here, and I can answer it. Um, I can, you know, there are ways to, there's notes. You can take notes. There's uh, just like regular, like if you were to do, like, a, a college course. But um, you can ask me questions. It's actually a direct line to me, and you can ask me questions because I'm, I'm considered a professor of this course. So um, if you were to say, uh, if, if, if enough people 
got it and they were asking me, you know, we really would like a video on how to mix the chemical. Now, I've got videos on how to mix Crossfire on my YouTube, but I could actually go and make one on how to actually mix it and I can upload it to this course and then you'll get it there right away and it's free. You know, it's not, you've already paid for it. Every bit of information I add to it in the future is all available to you right away. So that's one reason I really like this system. It's not something that you have to actually upload a whole brand new course and then you have to pay for that separate. No, it's all included in this. So that's one of the reasons I like this system. But anyway, enough about that. I'm not one for promotion. If anybody knows me, the only thing I typically promote is like and subscribe to the channel, uh, follow me, and come in for my live stream so you can ask me questions if you have any questions at all. So uh, How To says... I use Tempo annually for most outdoor bug treatments. Is it just as good as Crossfire? You can't use Crossfire outdoors. Crossfire is only usable inside. It is only for bed bugs. It is only labeled for bed bugs. Um, so you're not, you can't use Tempo uh, outside. Not for outdoor bug treatments. You can't use Crossfire. You can use Tempo, but you can't use Crossfire. Crossfire is specifically labeled only for bed bugs. So let's say you have a home that has a problem with stink bugs or you have a home that has a problem with ants. Well, then you can't use Crossfire. You have to use something else. That Crossfire is not going to work as effectively on those bugs because it is a specialty chemical only for bed bugs. So anyone who, who, who's done pest control understands that there are specific pesticides for different things. So if you go to my... Um, Amazon page and and this like tick control. See, this is my tick section. So if you click here, these are the chemicals that I recommend for ticks. Bifenthrin granules. There's this is for the yard. Um, you've got you know that's for ticks. And then you go to stink bugs. Well, the chemicals for stink bugs are different. So this is what I've had the most success getting rid of stink bugs is Alpine WSG. That's what I use for stink bugs. So it's not one of these like one size fit all. I'm gonna I'm gonna use one chemical and it's gonna kill everything. There are some pesticides that kind of work that way, but I have found in the industry, if you target a specific problem, like if a house has stink bugs and you go and you use Alpine, while Alpine kills stink bugs really well, it will also kill things like ants and spiders and roaches and silverfish, but you're targeting the stink bugs, and if other bugs die in the process, that's just like a bonus for the homeowner. So that's the way that I attack pest control, I attack it from a, what is actually bothering this specific customer? What does this customer want? What does this customer need? What's their irk? You know, what's, what's bothering them? I tackle that problem. And if other bugs die in the process, that's just great. So Big Gamer says, what is your opinion on the aerosol crossfire available on Amazon? It's no good. So aerosols, one of the problems with aerosols is aerosols have a lot of, um, inactive ingredients. So one thing about an aerosol can is they put other ingredients in the can that actually propel the chemical out. So you have a propellant mixed in the can. And a lot of times that's mixed on, uh, that's actually listed under other ingredients and it's not actually on the label. So the problem with that is that propellants, some propellants, actually can cause pesticides to break down sooner. When you mix crossfire yourself in a uh, like in a in a gallon you know spray tank, then you have something that doesn't have any other inactives in it. I mean it does have some inactive ingredient in it, but it doesn't have any other propellant that actually does cause pesticides to break down over time faster than say something that you just mix and spray yourself. So I don't recommend the Crossfire um, aerosol cans at all. In fact, I've had people tell me uh, who have bought it. Now, I've never used it, but I have had people tell me that they have used it and it has not worked. And when they use the actual liquid concentrate mix themselves, it worked a lot better. So that's why I advise that you don't really buy the, the aerosol. It's just not effective. It's more of a lazy man kind of, oh, I'm going to do this because it's cheaper but it doesn't work. It just doesn't work that good. You get what you pay for. I'm so I hope I answered your question though, Andre, about apprehend. 
I did. I happened to glance back up there again. But um, for those that don't know, Apprehend is a chemical that's been labeled for bed bugs. It's a, a mold spore that attacks the exoskeleton and causes it to break down and kills the bed bug. And Apprehend is actually, uh, like I said, the mold has actually been causing, uh, it causes skin irritation and rashes to come up on people. And so that's the reason that I have not actually switched to Apprehend yet. I don't want to give people a bunch of itchy rashes. That's the whole thing I'm trying to prevent is itchy rashes. <laughs> um, Danielle says, is there anything that you can rub on the skin to repel in-home pests? Um, well, not really, not that I know of. Um, the only thing I know that people use that works to keep pests off of them, like if you were to go outside, like off for mosquitoes, but as far as actually keeping bugs off of you, there's really not anything. I mean, there are people that claim that certain lotions and stuff will keep bugs away, but that's really just, I mean, it's really per individual. The body chemistry plays a lot into what attracts bugs to you specifically. Um, the CO2 you produce, the, the body heat itself, and it's just really, really hard to, um, to keep the, the bugs away from you, like especially like bed bugs, mosquitoes, fleas, things like that are going to try to get on you if they're there in your house. Um, Big Gamer says, how long after applying Crossfire are you supposed to be out of the home? Until it dries. Uh, the label's not specific. It just says until the surfaces are dry. I usually tell people from two to three hours because that's, that's, it's going to be dry by then. So that's usually what I tell people. Um, how do you feel about Sterifab? Big Gamer says, how do you feel about Sterifab? Um, it's, it's, it has its uses. It has its uses on, you know, different things. It's, it's really good for things like bird mites and stuff like that. Um, it, it, it'll, it'll sterilize areas, you know, it's good for that. Like if the bird mites are getting into bird nests and stuff like that outside and you've already gotten rid of the bird and you've gotten rid of the bird nest, you can use Sterifab and you can clean the area to kill off any bird mites to keep them from coming in the house and biting you. Uh, Andre said, yeah, you did. I like your insight. I recently became available in Canada. Yes, that's what I was trying to say a couple weeks ago. It was either last week or a couple weeks ago, um, is that if you live in Canada, a place that you cannot get Crossfire, I would absolutely use Apprehend. That's what I would use. If I lived in Canada and I was a Canadian exterminator, I would be purchasing Apprehend. I'd be their best friend. That's that's absolutely what I would do. I would be purchasing Apprehend. But if you're using Demand CS, you're using that for bed bugs. Demand? Is Demand? I didn't know Demand had a label for bed bugs. That's news to me. I remember when demand came out. I remember it was, oh, it was hot garbage. I hated that stuff. It was so thick and goopy. It's a, it's the first micro cap that I ever used. And uh, all that stuff is, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. We were using it a little bit for cockroaches when um, a lot of the roaches were immune to other things. We were using demand. And uh, I just, I never really cared a whole lot for it. I uh, couldn't get it to work as well as some of the other things that I had at my arsenal. So I just, I think uh, half a pint is all I went through. <laughs> I said, that was it. I was like, oh, this is this is garbage. I can't use this stuff. But I've heard some good things about it recently. Like they've got a little bit of better formulation. It mixes a little better with water. It doesn't clump up as bad. But I remember when it was new, it was really thick and goopy and Oh, it would clog the screens of your BNG, and it would get in the tip of the sprayer, and it was just, oh, it was just awful. I hated that stuff. But I did try it. I did try demand when it first came out as an alternative for cockroaches, and I didn't care a lot for it. Just so you know, if anybody comes in the chat, and you see everybody's typing, everybody's being all, you know, nice to each other and everything, um, but if anybody ever wanted to come in and actually call the phone number is there it's a it is a skype number so if you call me everybody's going to hear your question um but typically you could just call in ask a question and then i usually will hang up so that it'll free up the line for anybody else if they call but i will answer your question live on the air if it's something that you're interested in you don't want people to see your name in the list or something i that's why i i purchased the phone number is so that you can come in and actually ask me questions if you want to and not have be more anonymous basically so people don't know who you are because it won't show your name it won't show anything it just calls in and you you can tell me your name you can tell me where you're from if you want or you don't have to 
So, uh, Canadian label might be different, I guess. Most companies go either Demand, CS, or Dragnet. Yeah, now I've never used Dragnet. I've heard of it, but I've never used it. Uh, let's see. Big Gamer says, My pest service uses PT Alpine and Sterifab uh, for treatment of bed bugs. I also noticed one after about four months and no sight of one. Yeah, uh, Alpine's pretty good. Alpine WSG, I've used that for bed bug control. I haven't used the PT Alpine. Uh, let me, hold on just a minute. I'll be right back. Hold on just a minute. How do I do this? Sorry about that. Fix my chair. There we go. <laughs> Somebody, kids come in here and play with my chair and adjust the height on it all the time. They like to make it go up and down, up and down. So. But yeah, so the PT Alpine, um, I've heard really good things about it for fleas. But I don't, like I said, I'm really, if it's PT Alpine, if it's what I'm thinking, it's the Aerosol Alpine. Um, I think that's what it is. Yep, pressurized. So, yeah, I, I haven't been, I don't know. I, I just, I don't like a lot of the pressurized um, products. Now, I, I think they have their place. Um, I use a lot of PT-565, uh, CB-180, um, you know, I like those as like a flushing agent to try to chase out cockroaches, um, so, uh, Danielle says 7, 11, 7 out of 11 viewers are from Canada, how do you know that? I can't, I can't tell, I don't know how to tell how, where people are from. <laughs> I do have a lot of people from Canada watch me. I don't know why. I don't know why. Probably wanted to look at this redneck from Virginia down here and see what, what those crazy Americans are up to. I didn't realize that there were people. I know Andre's from Canada. I remember him. He comes in all the time. But, uh, yeah, I never know where people are from unless you tell me. I don't really ask. I'm just here to help whoever. I think it's a pretty cool system, the way that YouTube is set up where I can help people from all around the world deal with their bug problems. I mean, at least in the best way I can. Uh, I try to help people. So, uh, let's see. How do I do this? Man, I yeah, look I crazy. Where people are crazy, crazy. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Well, I don't have enough thumbs up yet. Andre says the algorithms are in your favor, but I don't I don't have any thumbs I only have five thumbs up out of the fifteen people, thirteen to fifteen people watching, uh, I don't have but five thumbs ups and so you guys need to thumb me up more and share me around and like my channel and subscribe to me and all that good stuff. So, uh, shameless promotion there. But um anyway. So I hope everybody's ready for the weekend. If anybody's planning on anything. Um we're, we might be going camping. I don't know. They're calling for storms Saturday, but I really like to camp. It's one of my favorite things to do. 
And so, uh, of course, I like to go right out there and hang out with the bugs because that's whatever, whatever you do when you go camping. You always just like to hang out with the bugs. Uh, Tanya A says, what is the average price to get rid of bed bugs professionally? Um, so that's relative to where you live. So just to give you an idea, locally around Lynchburg, uh, and, and also it's different per company. So, so if you're going to look at a heat treatment, if you're wanting to purchase a heat treatment, you can spend anywhere from sixteen hundred dollars to you know four or five thousand dollars to to do a heat treatment for bed bugs. If you're looking for a chemical application like something like Crossfire Apprehend, you're going to look anywhere from three hundred fifty dollars a room to uh, you know some some people do flat rates for homes. I do flat rates for homes, um, but you can you're looking anywhere from three hundred fifty dollars a room to up to five six thousand dollars again, even for a liquid application so it just depends on um it just depends on where your uh where you live and who you're purchasing your system from that's the main thing So Big Gamer says, yes, it is aerosol, which is why I want to find someone to be able to treat my house with Crossfire now that I have seen my first one in the last four months. Okay, thanks for the reminder. Okay. Um, what did I remind you about? I'm tired. It's been a long day. So I did something today. I'm working on a new video, and I'll run it past you guys. I got quite a few people in here. I'll see what you guys think. So, I have been dealing with a pest control technician who lives in California. She is a advocate for saving the honeybees. So, and I, I mean, all power to you if, if you like honeybees. I kill honeybees. Um... And I, I admit it, I, I say it <laughs> right out in the open. Hey, I kill honeybees, but uh, it's not illegal. One of the things that uh, one of the the um, rumors going around is that it is actually illegal to kill honeybees, and you should never kill honeybees because they make honey and they're wonderful and they're the best pollinators. And if we didn't have honeybees, we would all die, um, which is not true. Um, because the honeybee is not native to North America and they were shipped here by colonists when they colonized the North American uh, continent back in the 1600s. And, oh, <laughs> thumbs up. Okay, now I get it, Danielle. So I'm working on a video. So let me show you what I saw today, if I can get it to work because it may not be on the cloud yet because I use iCloud for all of my videos. And if it's on the cloud, I will show you a video that I took today. Uh, it's going to be part of my most recent one I'm doing on honeybees. There it is. So you guys can get a sneak peek. But a lot of people look down on me because I kill honeybees. Um, but let me show you. Where is it? I got a video player going to pop up somewhere here, I think. Maybe not. My computer is not the best. Well, I might freeze up. Just let me know if I freeze up. But so anyway, so like I was saying, honeybees are, um, they're, they're, they pollinate plants. Everybody knows this. This is They drink the nectar of flowers, and they pollinate plants. They make honey, and they're great. But um, the problem is, is that they're not native to North America. So what's happening with honeybees is they are uh, chasing out natural um pollinators so the way it works is let's say a honeybee flies along and he's all friendly happy you know we're gonna 
we're going to pollinate this little plant right here. Okay, they're going, let's say it's a honeysuckle bush or something. And the, the, the honeybee pollinates the plant. And then a, uh, let's say a butterfly comes along and it, it has to wait its turn. So it doesn't actually pollinate right away. It has to wait its turn. So what happens is that the butterfly is hungry. So instead of pollinate that flower, it goes off somewhere where the honeybee is not. And so what's happening is it's causing problems with local plants. So if the plant is not pollinated, so, so honeybees are actually not very good pollinators. They pollinate some plants really well and other plants very poorly. And so uh, what's happening is a lot of the plants, they're not pollinating, even though they're going to them and they're drinking the nectar and they're making honey, they're not pollinating the plant like they should. And so what's happening is the, um, the local pollinators are being chased away and the local plants are actually dying off. And the pollinators that would normally be pollinating these plants are also hungry and some of them are dying off as well just from starvation because the honeybees are chasing them out of the area. And so it's not that they're attacking what the, the honeybees don't attack these other bugs, but are bats or, you know, hummingbirds. But, um, but anyway, they are, uh, oh yes, don't wear perfume if you're dealing with bees because they like to, they'll come after you. That's, that's, that's a tip for exterminator. <laughs> that's how I had to go after honeybees today. But, um, oh man, if I could get this video to work, I really want this video to work so I can show it to you guys. But I don't think it's going to work. That's no fun. Because I wanted to show you what I'm working on. Uh, this is the things you get on my live stream. Tech support. Let's see. Play. There we go. Oops. No. No, no, no. Okay. So I'm going to loop it, but I'm going to mute it. Oh, actually, you can hear the bees. I'll let you listen to it, too. Let's see if I can get it to show. So this is what I saw today, and you can hear the bees. Let me mute my mic so you can hear it better. I don't know how well you could hear that, but those bees are actually going in. They're, they're honeybees. They're, of course, they're honeybees. This happened in a matter of 20 minutes. A whole brood came in and moved into this woman's ceiling. So you can kind of see on this picture here. Let me pause it. Okay. So right here above this door, there is a framed in um, sheetrock room. And so it's not, it's a basement, but it's not open, like an open basement. It's actually a finished basement. And the nest is in about two feet into the uh, ceiling above this door. And so the nest is actually becoming established inside this house. And so I had to go and treat around this frame right here to keep those honeybees from going in that person's house. But that's what I worked on today. So I'm actually on a video, I'm actually working on a video explaining um, how honeybees are not native to North America and how they are actually chasing out local pollinators and all that stuff. So I'm working on it. So look for that in the future. That's that's going to be a new video, sneak peek, new video. But um, anyway, I'm still kind of, I get, you go on these bee jobs like this and you have to get right in them. I didn't get stung or anything, but you have to get like right in them. I don't wear a bee suit or anything. I just go after them. That's the way I've always done it. And uh, I'm a little allergic, not completely allergic, but I do swell up pretty bad. So anyway, that's what I did this afternoon at like, I don't know, 5.30, 6 o'clock this afternoon. Um, so Anioth asks, advice on red chicken mite abatement in a house. So the best thing to do for mites is to use a miticide. I actually have a video on my channel on how to get rid of mites, bird mites, which is the, that's what you're looking to get rid of. And it's, um, let's see if I can find it, and then I'll post the link. Um, let's see, there it is. And I'll share, and I'll copy the link, and I'll post it in the chat. Um, 
yes, I always dust bees, Andre. That's how you get rid of bees. Is uh, so so the way that I got rid of the bees. Let's see if I can let's see if I can post it again. Did I did I close my window? I did. Oh well. Um, so the way I got rid of them was I uh, I used a dust all the way around the rim of the where the bricks meet the door frame and that the bees have to travel through it. If you use a liquid pesticide, the bees can actually avoid the pesticide and not crawl through it. So what you need is a bellows hand duster and you, uh, you, you fill it with about half full of dust, um, of course, labeled for bees, and you dust in the void in the crack and it will bellow out in there. And so that way, even if the bees don't come into contact with the dust itself, when their wings, when they fly through it, their wings will, will you know, uh, disturb it. And, you know, if dust, you know, if you take a fan and blow it across dust, it stirs it up in the air. And so what happens is when the bees fly across it, it stirs it up in the air and makes it stick to them. They transport it into the hive and they infest, they infect the rest of the hive that actually isn't flying out, like the, the drones and the, and the queen that are actually in the hive that don't leave. That's the way you get rid of bees successfully. That's the way you get rid of yellow jackets, honeybees, bald face hornets, European hornets, anything that's going into the wall like this, like you see in this video, the, um, that's how you get rid of them. You don't use gasoline, don't use kerosene, don't use wasp and hornet freeze. You just dust in the wall. In fact, if you use wasp and hornet freeze, you're going to make the bees madder than hell. They're going to come after you. They're going to sting you. You're going to get hurt. And that's not what we want. We want to get rid of the bees and not get hurt. So that's the safest way to deal with bees. And I don't get stung. Uh, in fact, it was so funny. In, uh, when my son was eight, so this was eight years ago, my son was eight, I took him on his first bee job. It was a honeybee job. And they had already emptied like three cans of wasp and hornet spray on these bees. And it didn't work. Of course, the bees could avoid it. And so, but they were really mad. They were really, really mad, really angry. And I told my son, I'm like, well, we're going to go get rid of this nest of uh, honeybees. And he's like, okay, that's scary. And I'm like, well, it's okay. We won't get stung. I never get stung. And really, I hadn't. Up until this point, I had never been stung on the job. And I'm like, no, it'll be fine. They were so mad. They came after me, and they stung me, hurt me. Oh, it was awful. I got stung three or four times. It was miserable. I use all kinds of dust, Andre. Um, i tell you what my favorite dust, though, my absolute favorite dust. You can't buy it anymore. But it was the best insecticide dust in ever was um Durzban dust Durzban dust which i saw but oh man i wish i had taken a picture of a bottle of that Durzban today i have a customer who actually has some Durzban in a bottle uh at his house it's old old bottle but um Durzban dust was amazing it was an amazing pesticide dust for ants and all kinds of stuff just worked really really well just me says i just got here um, oh, let me see. How to video said first says, looks like a newer door and someone forgot to use expansion foam to seal the door frame. Yeah, I agree. I told her that, you know, if, if they've got any honey in the wall, it's going to attract yellow jackets, hornets, ants, all kinds of bugs will come for that honey. And so she'll need to seal it. So the way that you keep honeybees or other bees from moving in and stealing the honey is you have to seal it and the way you seal it is you use steel wool in the crack and then you come behind yourself after the steel wool and you put caulking in and so that way if the bees chew past the caulking they have to go through that steel wool and they can't do it and that's that's actually advice from a beekeeper told me to do that and that it does work it absolutely does work but dry on dust is really good too um just me says i just got here i'm having a problem with indian meal moths so the way you have to get rid of Indian meal moths is I, I need to do a video on this because I do not have a video on Indian meal moths. But Indian meal moths are very annoying. You have to find what they're breeding in. You have to throw it away. Figure out what they're actually eating and, get, and breeding in and, and, and get rid of it. Um, the way you do this is you get yourself some gallon size like freezer bags, like Ziploc bags, and seal as much of your stuff in it as you can. Look in all the boxes if you see like webbing. So let me uh, let me see if I can find a picture of uh, meal moth webbing. 
Okay, so let's. I'll, I'll show you guys what what uh, what Just Me is talking about here. So these are Indian meal moths, right here. This is what an Indian meal moth is. Now they're they're maybe about you know that big, that size of a penny in in, in length. Um, but let me see. Is this uh, F11? Is it F11 or is it Control? There we go. Had it zoomed in, probably because I was showing you guys something. But um, so the Indian meal moth, there, there's what the Indian meal moth looks like, and it gets into your uh, stored products, uh, gets into cereals and stuff like that. Let's see, I wanted the webbing. So when you open a box, you'll see stuff like this. This will be in the box. Now that this maybe not this dramatic, but you'll see like the webbing inside, and you'll see cocoons and stuff. These are the worms. These are what's actually eating your stored products are these worms. They're like maggots, and they crawl around, and they eat cereals, nuts. These are actually in almonds. These meal moths are in almonds, um, but which I've seen. I've seen them get into walnuts and stuff before. Um, here's, a, here's a really good example of some seeds. Looks like sesame seeds, and they've created all this webbing in here, but here's the, the maggots that are crawling up. The way you have to get rid of these is you have to figure out, here's a cocoon. There's what the cocoon looks like. But this is absolutely magnified. It's it's actually pretty small. Here's a really good picture of a cocoon there. Um, here's some that are in cereal. Some meal moths. Uh, but a lot of times that people bring meal moths into their house is if you uh, feed the birds, they come in bird seed. It's a really common thing for people to have uh, meal moths. And so, yeah, if you use airtight containers for everything, that will work. Um, if you, and what you do is you, you look through all the boxes, pay attention. Some boxes may not have even been opened yet. So I had a customer that had Indian meal moths yesterday, went into her house and she had a box of graham crackers sitting in on her shelf. And the graham crackers had never been opened, but the meal moths had actually chewed their way out of the paper bag inside the box of graham crackers and were flying around inside the box. So just because you haven't opened it yet doesn't mean they're not in it. it they can come in your product that you bring in from the store. Uh, even then, that's not as likely to bring them in manufactured goods, but they absolutely can come from manufactured goods. But yeah, bird seed is absolutely the like the number one, and dog food, dog food and bird seed are like the top two most popular ways that meal moths get in the house. Dog food, cat food, um, you know, pet food in general, rabbit food, stuff like that, and uh, bird seed. But birds don't care. Bob, shoot, birds will eat the moths. They love moths, and so you know they don't really monitor. The FDA isn't as keen on monitoring bird seed as they are on, you know, graham crackers. You know, you're less likely to find them in graham crackers than birdseed. But dog food is really bad for meal moths. Uh, meal moths, grain beetles, um, lots of different things. Yes, you can. Um, uh, so CRS, can I order Crossfire online? Let me show you. Let me actually just send you a link. That'd be the easiest way to do it. Um... Sorry, I'm looking it up for you real quick. I'm going to give you a direct link. MGK ought to hire me as a salesman. They really should. I sell this stuff like crazy. All the time. But I don't care. I don't need to get paid. <laughs> but that's a link to Crossfire right there, CR. So if you click that and go to that, that's that's Amazon link. If you've got Amazon, that's a link directly to it. You might find a cheaper price, but that's that's Amazon. I haven't been able to find a cheaper price than Amazon. Uh, Do Your Own Pest Control used to sell it cheaper, but they don't anymore. The cheapest place is Amazon right now. Can bed bugs spread through a washing machine? Yes, they can. Um, so... If your water 
does not heat to above 125 degrees. So check your water heater. And if your water heater is set below 125 degrees, then bed bugs can get into your washing machine. Um, they won't live in the washing machine itself, but they can, they can survive the washing machine is basically what I'm saying. They can't survive the dryer, but they can survive the washing machine. So I always tell people that if you're concerned that bed bugs might be in your clothing, then you should dry your clothes first. Check the lint trap. If you find that you have bed bugs in the lint trap and you still want to wash your clothes, wash your clothes, then dry them. Because the dryer is going gonna, is gonna to kill the bed bugs before they spread anywhere. So I would use the dryer first. Which is like backwards. You wouldn't think you'd dry your clothes before you wash them. But no, it does. It does kill the bed bugs in your clothes. Especially a lot of people ask me, well, what do I do about my closet full of clean clothes? If your clothes are already clean and you just run them through the dryer, you're not wasting a whole bunch of water or spending a whole bunch on a water bill for washing clothes that really are already clean. And if you're not finding bed bugs in already clean clothes, there's no reason to wash and dry them. Just dry them once and find out if you've got bed bugs in them or not. Uh, I've got a swallow nest that is breeding swallow bugs and they are creeping in the house. Swallows are protected. Is there any advice? Oh. Let me see. Sorry, I'm tired. Are swallows really protected? I didn't know that. We don't really have swallows that much around this area of Virginia. I don't really know what to tell you if they're protected. The only thing I know, it says you can keep them away. Uh, every spring, the swallows arrive in North America, whether they are welcomed or not. This means mud nests are on your home and garage and more swallows are being born next year uh, to return next year. Swallows are known to return to the same location year after year. This happens only if there are no bird deterrents in place. What also happens is if the swallows have nested on your property, but they have left, another pest bird will often squat in an already ready-made nest. Uh, a very popular area where swallows like to build their mud nests is under the eaves of the home. This area provides protection to the swallow from their predators and offers them a nice hidden area to hunker down. This is true for other pest birds as well and why nests need to be removed. So... Once the swallows have moved away, you need to remove the nest and you need to um, put up deterrents to try to keep the swallows uh, from returning every year because they're going to come back. But in the meantime, treat the inside of your house. Treat around all your cracks and crevices in the house. Do a thorough crack and crevice treatment with a liquid pesticide so that you've got a residual so when the swallow bugs do come in the house, they die and they don't actually establish themselves inside your house. That's what I recommend. Um, so CR says, thanks, man. My neighbors have bed bugs and they are crawling through my baseboards. This whole apartment has them. I need Crossfire to help sleep because the, the bugs aren't going anywhere. Um, yeah, that's, that's a bad thing about living in an apartment. Danielle says, what are your thoughts on DDT? Uh, it's illegal, um, and it's pretty much it pretty much doesn't even work on a lot of bugs anymore. Uh, the problem with DDT, and one of the reasons that they they actually started straying away from DDT before DDT was made illegal, was because uh, they were finding strains of bed bugs that were immune to it. So yeah, uh, it's 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 okay, but it's really it had its time. It was around. It worked really good for the time, but. I feel like there are better better pesticides on the market now than ever before in the history since I've been an exterminator for 33 years. I've been licensed since I was 17, 22 years. And uh, before that, I had, I mean, I've been doing it all my life. It's all I've ever done. And I've never known of any chemical that works as well as some of the pesticides we have today. Um, we've got like Termidor for termites that works on a, uh, non-repellency, which is something that really was never really heard of prior to the year 2000. Uh, we never really used any non-repellent pesticides for termites. It was always a repellent, always a barrier, always put up a barrier to repel the termites. 
and Termidor works so much better on Termites. Uh, you've got things like Crossfire that work the same way on a non-repellency. Uh, we have a lot of non-repellent pesticides that pretty much just treat the bug as if, oh yeah, come on in, enjoy yourself. They crawl through the chemical and they die. And so I just feel like the pesticides now are just so, so much better. But Malathion is still uh, legal. You can still buy Malathion. Uh, any of I said they miss Malathion, but it's still around. Now the label has changed, but um, you're not supposed to use it indoors or anything like that. But Malathion doesn't last very long. The problem is, is that once you use it, it starts to deteriorate right away, and it just doesn't last long at all. Um, let's see. Protected until August. Protected until August in California. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are protected. Swallows and lots of things that are protected throughout different parts of the year. Uh, bats are protected in, in Virginia. You're not allowed to seal bats out of your house. Uh, if they've already gotten in during the mating season because they'll have babies. And so you have to seal them out before they have babies. And then if you don't, then you have to wait till they leave and then you can seal them out. So yeah, I understand. There's things like that here in Virginia too. CR says, that's amazing. A bed book can survive a washing machine. What a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't looked at that link yet. Does Crossfire come in something I can spray on the baseboards? It doesn't come in a sprayer. You have to buy a sprayer. So I have a video. Um, actually, let's let's. I'll just I'll just share my screen, and I'll show you. Um, so let's go to my channel, which I recommend going to my channel. Um, what is this video here that's playing? I hate that YouTube started doing that now, where they play this video down here. There we go. All right, so if you go to my channel and you hit the subscribe button, then you go here because <laughs> I have to. I have to tell people to subscribe because I never thought I'd reach thirteen thousand subscribers, and it's pretty wicked awesome. And I want to get a hundred thousand subscribers so I could put that red plaque right here on this wall, right underneath this American flag. I don't know if you've got to ever see this. This is a pretty neat flag. Let me show you. That's a wood burned American flag somebody made. And that's pretty cool. I like crafts. I, I'm a crafty person myself. I like stuff like that. But anyway, um, I want to reach 100,000 subs so I can put a plaque on the wall. I just think that would just be really, really, really neat. But um, anyway, the uh, I show how to mix it. So how to mix Crossfire right here. And I'll show it to you real quick. We're not going to listen to it. But we'll go to, actually, we might listen to it. Let's go to about, I always talk too much. All right, so you go to about four minutes in. Amazon page, it's there. So Crossfire is a newer pesticide. It's been out a few years now, and it works really good for the elimination of bed bugs. So the way that we mix Crossfire is first we want to pour water into our gallon container. Now we're, we're using a gallon size container because Crossfire is mixed 13 ounces to a gallon. And now the little bottle that you see in this little clip is a 13 ounce bottle of Crossfire. So what you do is you pour the water into the BNG or whatever sprayer you're using. We're using a BNG in this uh, specific clip. And the, uh, you fill it halfway full. And then you pour your crossfire in. And now it's buffering. But anyway, <clears throat> basically, what I go over in that video is you pour it halfway full of warm water, you pour your crossfire in, and then you fill it the rest of the way up to equal a gallon. So you'll have 128 fluid ounces after you're done, which is a gallon, um, with the crossfire mix. Crossfire is 13 ounces to a gallon of water. So it's, uh, it's like, well, not necessarily to a gallon, but to equal a gallon. So if you've got 128 ounces and you minus 13 ounces, that's 115 ounces of water, 13 ounces of crossfire, 128 ounces. That's how you mix it. So, but um, I wouldn't use a Windex bottle. I would use a gallon because a Windex bottle is not a gallon. A Windex bottle is like a pint or a half a gallon. And so you're not going to get... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of chemical. Yeah, 
It's a lot of chemical to a bottle. It's 13 ounces to a gallon. Um, let's see. Man, a lot of people have typed. I watched that little bitty clip. Wasn't even 40 seconds long, and so many people have typed. I've lost my place here. If bed bugs do happen to get into your washer, how do you treat? You don't treat your washer. You just continue. You just wash your clothes through your washer. It'll be fine. But they can survive the washer. So basically what I mean is it's not that they're infesting the inside of the washer. They don't infest the inside of the washer. What they do is they live on your clothes. And you take your clothes out, they're still alive. So you need to take them and put them in the dryer. Don't hang them out on the line or anything. Put them in the dryer and run them through the dryer. And so that's what you need to do. They'll, they'll survive the washing machine. If the, so don't think you're going to kill them in your washer. You won't. You have to kill them in the dryer. How to Video says, uh, How long does Termidor last? 16 years. I heard 10 years. However, I want to hear it from a professional user. No, no. Termidor lasts 16 years. Um, Ineos says, 33 years. Impressive. I've been an exterminator 17 years this year. That's why I come here, though. You're a wealth of knowledge. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, just me says, how do you get rid of moles? Okay. I'm going to do a video on moles, but, um, moles are something that you don't really get rid of. Um, there are baits. There's lots of different things out there that people try to use for moles, but I recommend treating your yard with like a granule pesticide. So I have a video, actually, uh, I have a, I have a, um, I have a video on ticks. So if you go to my channel it's a brand it's a newer video so you just go to let's see just go to videos so right that's not here i thought it would be oh there it is ticks four easy steps go to this video if you follow the steps in this video for ticks you're going to get rid of your moles too more than likely now it's not going to kill the moles it's going to kill the grubs in the soil that the moles are eating so moles are carnivores they eat grubs, earthworms, stuff like that that crawl in the soil. And they like to stay near the surface of the soil, which is why you get all those little molehills. So that's typically where the grubs are in the ground. So if you go and you treat your soil and you kill the grubs in the soil, the moles will leave your yard alone most of the time. And I usually recommend that instead of hire somebody to come out and do it, just do it yourself if you can because you save a lot of money. It's not that expensive. It's not that hard. You're looking at maybe an hour or two of work. And it can get rid of your moles in your yard. Sometimes for the remainder of the year, you may need to do it about once every quarter during the warm months when the grubs are worse. But once you kill off all the grubs, the moles will, they'll have nothing to eat. And they'll leave your yard alone. So that's what I recommend for moles. Um, but yeah, so, so just to give you a little bit of back history on me, um, I say 33 years. So I am 39 years this year. Uh, my dad broke me into pest control when I was six, seven years old, around six years old, uh, sending me into crawl spaces, attic spaces, uh, places that I could fit because I was small. And so I actually started with termite work um, because I was little and I could fit into some tight places. I've, I've, I've treated houses for, with chloridane, I've treated houses with Dursban, and I've treated houses with uh, bifenthrin and termidor. I've treated houses with Timbor, I've used Boracare. Um, I've done lots of termite work because I was little and I could fit in places that most people couldn't. And so that's how I got started in, uh, in pest control. And I have been licensed since I was 17 because what happened was my dad used to have a guy that worked for him and he worked for my dad for six years. And he quit in February right after I had turned 17 years old. Now I had my driver's license and everything. And I was actually studying to take to sit for the state exam for pest control. And I went and, and sat for it in February. And I had my own truck and my own route ever since. And now I'm 39 years old, 22 years later, still running a pest control route every day. It's what I love to do. In fact, I had a route today. Um, but it's what I like. You, you like what you like, you know. <laughs> um Tony Martin says, I just got my apartment sprayed. Okay. Uh, CR says, I need that sprayer. Um, yeah, you don't have to. Okay, so you don't have to get a B&G. So, is this thing not working? There we go. thing has autofocus on it. Um, so, B&G, if you go to, let's see, there's a, 
Um, the problem with gallon sprayers, these cheap little plastic gallon sprayers, and this is the number one complaint that I get from people who use plastic sprayers, is that it doesn't spray uniform. They use too much chemical. It doesn't do the job right, or it doesn't use enough chemical, and it breaks. So that's the problem with using a garden sprayer. You know, if you've got a sprayer that's really designed for Roundup on weeds, and it doesn't matter if you drip a little extra here or there, it's not going to hurt anything, um, that's, a, that's different. But if you're using a pesticide that needs to be targeted to a very specific area, you need to, you need to use a piece of equipment that's more reliable. And they sell better equipment on Amazon, but from the reviews I've read, I still don't think anything really beats a B&G, honestly. Um, a B&G is a really good piece of equipment. I mean, my dad has his original B&G that he started when he started his company in 1985. He still has his original B&Gs. Now, he's had to do maintenance on them, and he's had to replace O-rings and gaskets and stuff like that. But overall, it still works. And, and you just can't get a plastic spray tank to last for, you know, nearly 40 years. That's a long time to, you know, to have a spray tank that still works. So, you know, that's why I use a BNG. That's why I have it on my site. That's why I use them because they last forever. I've, I've been in business for myself now for five years and I haven't had to buy a new BNG. I've, I've still, I just do regular maintenance, make sure it stays clean, clean the screens and stuff, change out the gaskets and everything. And the thing still works like it was brand new. Um, there's nothing like it. It's just a quality product. I mean, they've done some things to them that I don't like. Like they, they put those plastic lids on them and the plastic bottom and they used to have a uh, an actual welded piece on the side that would hold your wand a lot better. It didn't break that was better the, the the new design is cheap but it's still it's the same tank same pump same wand same hose you know, all that stuff still works the same oh no wonder no wonder crossfire works so well yeah yeah it's 13 ounces to a gallon it's 13 ounces active ingredient yeah it's it's really really strong i think it's like 40 percent active ingredient or four something like that um just me says great jason thank you so much andre says how many years was your dad an exterminator three three years but he's still in business my dad still is in business he's he's been doing pest control for um since 1985 but he was in business with another exterminator for three years prior to starting his own business but he's been in it forever i mean ever since i was what five yeah four no four years old no wait i was born in 81 so he started his business in 85, but he's been exterminator since like 82, 83, something like that. Uh, Danielle says, you deserve a contract with the city. You're a wealth of information. Give the mayor's office a ring. You are a professor. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't want to do that. Don't like to work for government. <laughs> oh. So CR says, we have an exterminator that sprays this apartment. He isn't good at all. I think it's just to cover their ass and say we spray every apartment. He has never heard of Crossfire. Well, a lot of exterminators haven't heard of Crossfire. Crossfire is a relatively new chemical. I, I started hearing about Crossfire. It's been maybe 10 years. Maybe. It's probably been less than 10 years. Because I had, so I wasn't using Crossfire when I started my company. I had heard of it. But the thing is, so every two years, in order for me to keep my license, I have to go through training. I have to go to these classes, and they have sales reps come in, and they teach you about all the new chemicals on the market and how they work. So you always stay up, because you really do need to stay up to date on all these new pesticides. And they had mentioned Crossfire, and they were talking about it using bed bugs and stuff like that. And I was like, well, what I'm doing right now is working, so I don't really need Crossfire. And so I kind of shelved it in the back of my mind and forgot about it. 
And then I started my YouTube channel and I talked to an exterminator and the exterminator actually called me out of Winchester. And he called me because of my YouTube channel and he was asking me about stink bugs and what I'm doing to kill stink bugs. And just, I don't know, just because I was curious, I asked him, I said, well, so what are you doing for bed bugs now? What what kind of chemical are you using? I've noticed that some of the things I'm using, I'm I'm running into resistances. I'm, I'm having problems where the bed bugs aren't dying. And he said, yeah, well, we're using Crossfire. I've been using Crossfire for the last couple of years and places I've used it, they don't get bed bugs anymore. And he's doing hotels and only having to treat maybe once or twice a year and they just never have bed bugs. And if they do, they die. And so I was like, well, that sounds really good. And this is from another exterminator. So I'll try it. I'll give it a shot. And I'm really, really glad I did. I mean, here I am I'm not hired by MGK. I don't. I'm. They don't pay me anything. They. They really don't. So, just. Just the. The company. That makes M. The MGK. This is the company, that makes, Crossfire, MGK. That's the company. They're out of Minneapolis, I think, and, they make all these different pesticides. That, that's what they are. They're a pest control, they're a pesticide company. So you go to products, bed bugs. Did I hit it? Products. Oh, their site's crap. I hate these. That's just irritating. So you go down here, you see bed bugs. See, they got bedlam. They invented bedlam for those that, that have never used that. That's a cross, that's a pesticide product. But here's Crossfire right there. There it is. Crossfire, MGK. They don't pay me. I don't make anything. I, I, I've sold, I've, I have probably sold them probably well over $10,000 worth Crossfire since I started telling people about it on, on YouTube for the last like four years. And they don't pay me anything. I contact them. I talk to them. I love their product. I don't care. They don't have to pay me. I love their product. I hope they continue to make awesome products. I have a new product that I actually just ordered from them that I'm going to try out for ants and I'll let you know how that works. In fact, I might even do a product review. I actually think I'm going to do a product review right here on my channel. But um, if you go to Ants, they've got a new product out. Um, oh, that's, is that, let's see here. Products. And we want, to, can you pick Ants? Indoor, no. I want products. Let me see. It's a brand new one. I don't think they've updated their site. See, they make Onslaught, Fast Cat. A lot of people use that. Those are good products. Man, I wish I could find it. Well, anyway, I'm excited. It's crazy. I mean, here I, I, I'm. I'm. I was asking. I asked a customer today. I said, "Do you think I might love my job too much? I'm excited about a chemical. I've made a chemical purchase." And it's called Samurai. And it's for mainly for ants, but it's for other bugs too. You use it for cockroaches and stuff too. And um, it's supposed to be coming in the mail tomorrow. So I'm really excited. I'm going to get to try this brand new product. I'm going to get to come on here and review it for you guys, let you know how it works. And uh, I have a feeling it's going to be really, really, really good. If anybody here, you know, in pest control has ever used Samurai, let me know. Um, cause I'm curious as to how it works for you if you've used it, but it's expensive, but I, I can't wait to try it. Man, I just drank the rest of my water. Okay. He comes in and sprays three areas, leaves puddles on the floor, takes two minutes. Wow. That's crap. That's, that's a bad exterminator. You're not supposed to leave puddles on the floor. Kelly Reynolds says, I have a question. I just had my house sprayed with crossfire by Orkin on March 31st. I'm now seeing bed bugs coming out of my heat vents. Do they spray that in the vents? No, you're not supposed to spray pesticide in vents. Uh, bugs don't actually come from inside the vents. So let me, I, I, I actually need to do this. So let's see, floor vents. Okay, so let, let's get, let's do a, let's do a, a um, we'll go over a quick thing here. I'll teach you something. Okay, so floor vents. These are lots of floor vents. So let's let's look at this one right here. This is a pretty good picture. If it'll load the picture. It's probably going to take me to a website. 
And it is. There's what I want. That's what I want. All right. So if you can see my pointer. Oh, come on. If you see my pointer right here, it looks like a crosshair right now. But um, this is your floor vent. So this, this actually fits into the floor. But around this edge, this crack right here along this edge, I don't know if you guys can see it too well. Let me see if I can zoom in. Well, it's not going to work for me, is it? There we go. Well. There. That's going to have to be the best it's going to be. But anyway, so around this crack right here where this vent actually fits into the floor, the bed bugs will live there. They don't actually live in the vents. A lot of people believe, in fact, I get this all the time, from customers they're like I see roaches coming out of the vent I see bed bugs coming out of the vents I see ants coming out of the vent they're not actually coming out of the vent what they're doing is they're living around this box so right here where you can't see there's actually a box that goes into the floor they actually live around the lip and inside like not in the ductwork but around outside the ductwork where the ductwork actually fits into the floor and so you can, you can, as a pest control technician, you can spray in this crack. You can actually pull this up out of the floor and treat around that crack that forms around that piece of ductwork, and that will help kill the bugs that, that will live down there. Because you will, you can have bed bugs live around in that little crack there. They won't live in the vent because of all the forced air that's coming through the vent, but they will live around the crack where the vent actually fits into the floor. So I hope that explains it because I do get that a lot from customers where they ask me, well, what about in my vents? Can you spray in the vent? You really aren't supposed to spray in the vent because you don't want to spray chemical in a vent, have the air cut on, and then shoot the chemical back into your face or up into the air and have it be airborne. You don't want that. You want to treat it in an area where it's not going to become airborne. It's just going to treat like the cracks, like around the baseboards and around this, uh, the edge of the vent, not in the vent itself. Uh, Kelly Reynolds says, I asked Orkin to, if he was using Crossfire, and he said yes. And he used Semexa dust and Silica something. Yeah, Silica dust is what's in Semexa. It's the same thing. <clears throat> I will probably have to stop, though, because I'm about to lose my voice. And I've been here for an hour and a half. I didn't realize it's been an hour and a half, but we're really talking a lot tonight. Lots of questions. Really appreciate everybody showing up tonight. Um, CR says, I know he's probably better, but he does the whole building. It's like 20 to 25 units, I think. Yeah, he's probably doing cheap a cheap job. I don't like doing unit work. I price them usually out of the price range, and I usually don't get them because I like to get paid for the work I do, and I don't want to beg for work. So um, usually I price a unit building $10 a unit, and typically I always get underbid. Uh, the last one I, I bid on, I got bid $4 a unit, and if you're going in and you're treating $4 a unit, you're not making any money and you can't you can't make a living doing work like that. And so I just don't I just don't do it. I let somebody else take it over. Uh, Big Gamer says, have you ever heard of an exterminator being asked to use product a customer provided? Uh, I've heard of that. <clears throat> I wouldn't do it. I don't use products that customers provide. If they hire me, um, then they hire uh, my expertise, not the chemical. You know, you can buy the chemical. You know, I mean, it, proof is right here. So if you ever want to use the chemicals I use, this these are the chemicals I use. Yeah, I'm not, the thing about me is I'm an open book, okay? This is my Amazon page. The link's in the description of all my videos, all right? So let me explain something to you. Every single chemical that I purchase, you can purchase. I don't use restricted-use pesticides. I use only the chemicals I list on my website. That's the stuff I use. Now, if you were to hire me to come into your house to spray for bugs, I'm going to use the chemical I believe is going to work best for the job. If a customer is providing you with a chemical to do a job, then don't do the job because you you're open yourself for liability. The customer does not understand how the chemicals work to the point that you do, and it may be a pesticide you're not familiar with, and you want to, you know, 
everyone, so, so whenever you buy a pesticide, whenever you use a pesticide, you need to understand that the label is the law and you need to follow the label. And with pest control technicians, we are versed in the label. We read the labels to these chemicals. We know how these chemicals work. You know, Crossfire has a very easy label. I think it's only two pages long. You read the label. You say, oh, it says to treat the mattress. Okay, we treat the mattress. It says to treat the bed frame. Oh, we treat the bed frame. You know, it's very specific on the places you're supposed to treat and how to treat. And if you get a chemical from a customer and a customer provides you with a chemical, oh, then you, you, it may be something you're not even used to using. You don't know how it works. You don't know how it affects the insects. And it's just not safe all around. You just don't use chemicals that are provided to you by anyone other than yourself you, you you know or your boss you know if you work for somebody and they say hey i want you to go out there and treat bob's house with alpine wsg this here it is this is how you mix it go out there and do it then do what he says because he's the boss but anyway how to video says do you use boric care if so what are your thoughts boric care is all right it's all right it's boric acid uh derivative it's it's okay it's uh, not something I would go to for pre-treats, but it is something I have used before. So, you guys have a real great night. I really appreciate it. I've got to go. I am losing my voice. I need to go make myself another cup of tea. But you guys have a real great night. I appreciate it. Remember, every Thursday night, I'll be here as long as I don't something doesn't happen. And Now, if I get called out on an emergency call because I'm a 24-hour pest control company, I go, I do it. So, I may not be here. If I'm not, that's why. You guys have a really great night. I appreciate it. I love coming on and talking with everybody. I really care a lot for you guys. I uh, I have a great time sitting here just talking, chit-chatting about killing bugs. So you guys have a great night. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.